What's up guys, Mitch from the DIYrecordingstudio.com. A little while ago, I did a shootout of my Neve 1073 style preamp, the Sound Sculptor MP573, and compared it with the API style preamp that I have, the Cappy VP28s. And I put a poll up for all you guys on what you thought was best, and I'll pop that up right now. And most of you favored the Neve 1073, which was, I thought was interesting. Some people commented that they preferred the 1073 for drums and they liked the overall sound of that. And then conversely, other people preferred the sound of the API, particularly on drums. And I personally am in that camp too. I loved the sound of the snare drum, particularly uh, coming through the API. The snare and the kick were punchier and more saturated to me. So to see what is really creating these differences between the two preamp types, I ran some tests through a piece of software called Plugin Doctor. Now you all might be familiar with that, but let's jump into it and have a look at what's really going on. What I have here is the Neve preamp and the API preamp. And I started with both preamps wound down. The tricky thing about this is both preamps don't have exactly the same gain settings. So what I did to make this kind of close to show what's happening in the recording um, is wind them down, then wind them to a midpoint and then wind them fully cranked on the input stage of the preamp. That way we're seeing the kind of saturation that happens. So if you don't know about preamps, part of the trick with them is that the saturation typically happens on the input preamp stage. So we'll get into that in a minute. But if you can bear with me, what I'm doing is starting with a low setting where we're not saturating much and then slowly cranking them up to get more saturation on the input sound source. And you'll see why we got the results we did in the Gear Fighter shootout. Let's have a look. This is both preamps wound down. On the Neve, it was about 20 dB of signal and on the API here, it was wound down and we've got close DB range of a one uh, kilohertz sine wave here. Um, remember, I'm not getting too into the weeds on perfection on this stuff. We just need to see what's happening with the harmonics. Now, what we can really see here on the API particularly is these second and third order harmonics starting to creep in. So right here, we've got a one kilohertz, a two kilohertz, a three kilohertz, harmonic four, five, and then we've got some stuff here, all right? But we can see these order of harmonics are a little more pronounced than what's happening over here on the Neve. There might be some stuff happening here, but we really can't see it. So already we're getting more saturation at a low level on the API versus the Neve. So now here we've got a snapshot of both preamps at kind of a midpoint. So the Neve at 40 dB again, and the API at 12 o'clock. And now we're getting some similar-ish results from both preamps. We've got a similar-ish boost at the first harmonic. Then at the third harmonic here, we've got a significant increase. And then we've got a bit of a harmonic here at five kilohertz as well on both of those. So we're starting to see more harmonics creep in on the Neve and they're coming up a little bit on the API there. Now this is where things get even more interesting. So now we've got the Neve cranked all the way to 60 dB of gain. And what you might notice, like I've tried to gain compensate a little bit so these things aren't clipping out completely because then we'd get really incorrect results of saturation, but they're almost clipping, all right, at zero dB here, coming back in. On the Neve, we've got much more of the second order harmonic, and we've got a cascading of all these harmonics down here. On the API, we've got pretty much a similar result. Second order harmonic comes up a bit, and that cascading of uh, harmonics. However, on the API, we should notice around here, we're getting much more busyness happening on the harmonics as opposed to the Neve. From 10 kilohertz on, let's count them. We've got 10, one, two, three, four, five, six harmonics. And on here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine harmonics. Okay, there's a lot more going on in the harmonic 
um, saturation here. We've even got this, whatever this might be. This might just be noise, I don't know. But there's more going on through this range of harmonics, especially from 10 kilohertz up. There's much more saturation. Now, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a preamp manufacturer, but this is kind of just a rough example of the differences of what I'm seeing in these two preamps. When I start with the Neve, it's cleaner with less harmonics in a low volume than the API. The API starts out much more saturated. When they get to kind of a mid kind of level of input gain, they're pretty even and they're really starting to push some harmonics into the sound source. And then as we crank them up fully, the harmonics definitely come up even further. We get much more harmonic saturation. And by comparison, the API has much, much more going on from that 10 kilohertz range up. Now, to me, that makes sense because what I was hearing is quite a bit more saturation when I drove those preamps. So just to put it back into context, in that original video, I recorded a bunch of sound sources and I was really driving them as much as I could into saturation to really hear the difference. And this is a thing that I've talked about before, but I'll talk about again. When people do these shootouts, typically, they're trying to be too sterile with the preamps and you're not hearing the coloration of preamps. If you wanna hear the coloration of a preamp in a shootout, you need to drive them. You need to use them like you would a guitar amp or some other kind of amplifier. Driving them into saturation is what's gonna actually bring out the coloration and the flavor of that preamp. That's if you want that. Um, if you want a cleaner sound, these preamps can be cleaner sounding. They're not clean, but they are cleaner at lower input gain settings so what i'm trying to show is probably something a little bit different to what you see when people do shootouts if you want to keep all the input gains relatively low all the preamps are going to sound similar and i see that all the time on youtube people doing shootouts of different preamps and going oh i can't really hear the difference there is a difference if you use them and drive them into saturation, if you use them that way, you will start to hear the coloration more. So I just wanted to do a video, one, looking at the results of my first Gear Fighter video. And if you liked that Gear Fighter video, there's gonna be more of those. Let me know in the comment section down below if there's something you'd like to see me shoot out, be it hardware, uh, microphones, or any other type of studio equipment. And more videos like this, where we kind of break down what's really going on with this equipment Equipment. because one, as a teacher and as a recording engineer, I want to know what the gear's doing. And it's all a bit of a science experiment and it's really nice to try and figure this stuff out together. So um, hopefully you got something out of this video. And if there's any equipment you've seen me use on this channel and you'd like to see me shoot that out, hit me up in the comment section down below. And if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe. I'm Mitch from the DIYRecordingStudio.com. I'll catch you soon.